Hi, I'd like to introduce you to STP Creator. STP Creator was specifically developed for Myob users. However, you don't need to use Myob to use STP Creator. As you can see, I've installed STP Creator and it's shown here as registered. Installing STP Creator as well as registering it are covered in separate videos. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to create a dataset file for a Myob user. Now we'll be using classic Myob version 19 as an example. However, exactly the same process applies if you're using Myob Live, for example, AR 2018. Now before we start, I just wanted to point out the help function. On any screen, there's a help button. And if you click that help button, it brings up a browser with help for that screen. For example, we get a lot of queries why this button number 4 is not lit up, why it's disabled. And if you scroll down here, you can see the conditions for this to be enabled. That has to be completed. Those numbers have to match. That should say yes. That has to be completed. And then once all those things are done, the assemble button will light up. I'll just close the screen and we'll get on with creating our data set file. This is how the main screen looks when you first open STP Creator. You'll notice here there's a 1 incomplete, 2 incomplete, 3 incomplete. In this video, we're going to cover step 1 and in the next video we'll cover the other steps. The first step involves creating the permanent data set. Now the setup for STP Creator will vary from user to user. It, it all depends how complex your payroll is. In the first edition of this video we used what we called a vanilla employer, an employer that was very simple payroll. As a result of a number of queries I've decided to spice it up a little bit and we're calling this one vanilla with choc chips. In addition to the allowance we're adding a terminated employee just so you know what to do on your very first STP report. The first STP report is always a bit more involved because you generally have to account for all payments made up until this date and that includes employees who may have left so we're going to cover what to do with an employee who has been paid this year but is no longer with you. The first thing to do when you start using STP Creator is click this button permanent data set that brings up this screen here. The permanent data set file stores all the settings that you use for STP. Once you have set up and saved your data set file, next time you want to use STP Creator, you simply open that saved data set file, load all the data from your MyUp file, click a few buttons, and then lodge the STP data, the ATO. So let's get started. First thing to do is click Create New Data Set. You see this message? Click OK. What you'll see here is the user ID is set as administrator. And if you look at the tooltip, it's got to be either administrator or STP NAMICH. I'll bring that up again there, STP NAMICH. And that's for confidentiality reasons. The first thing to do is click Browse and select our MIB file. So this is the one we're going to use, Vanilla and Choc Chip Employer. This next bit here is a license file. Just leave that as is unless you've got multiple licenses. You need to now add your username or your full name. This will be used for signing the declaration that goes to the ATO. You need to create a password. It needs to have one uppercase, one lowercase, one number and a minimum of eight characters. Now you need to give yourself a hint put a whole sentence there if you need, something that's going to remind you should you ever forget what the password is. I click Save. Now on this screen, the next step is to add our payer details. Now when you receive your license from NAMICH, you receive a payer ABN code and you'll need that at this step. So I'm going to click payer and complete the payer details. ABN, a branch, if you don't have a branch, leave that as 001. Then we enter the code we've received from Namich and click update. Now that information is now saved in our data set file and we won't have to enter it again. 
The next step is to load data from your MIAB file. So when you click this button, you'll be prompted to log in. And as I said, it's got to be administrator or a user called SDP Namich. So in this case, there is no password, so I won't enter anything. And it loads the data from your MIAB file. Yours might take a little longer than that. And what you can see now is when you look at payroll categories, there's 44 in this MIAB file. And payees, there's 93. So let's continue with the steps. So step one was loading the data. Step two is STP fields. So let's click that. This table shows the STP fields that have been provided by the ATO. These are the essentially the payment summary fields. And you need to select those that you will need. Now, as you'll see, there's 93 in total. 21 have already been pre-selected. They're ones that are compulsory. You need them, for example, name, address. There's also here employee gross pay. I'll just widen this column. Employee gross pay has been selected, so is employee tax, so is super guarantee. Now, in your case, you might need uh, some of the other ones, for example, voluntary withholding, uh, reportable FBT, labor hire. In our case, the only one we need when you scroll down to the allowances is car, car allowance. So we just select that, and now we've got 22. Click OK. And that's done. We've selected our STP fields. Step three, payroll categories. Now this can be a bit of a challenge. When you first open this screen, it's blank and you need to click update from company file. That brings in all the payroll categories in our company file, all 44. And what we need to do is we need to map each payroll category that we have used this year to an STP field. Now, a lot of times, you might not know which ones you need to map. Obviously, if we've used base hourly, that needs to be mapped. If, if you've used POG withholding, that needs to be mapped. So let's just map a couple of them. So that's employee tax, and it's W2. Now, I'll just explain that the fields that you need to map are essentially similar to the process you undertake in MIAB when you're creating your payment summaries. Okay, I'm just going to bring across a, a screen from MIAB. This is the payment summary assistant. So you know when you need to map these you, you click on gross and then you tick all the payroll categories that should go to gross then you click on car allowance and you tick all the ones for car allowance. It's basically the same thing. If you're not sure of which ones you've used this year, which ones you need to map, the easiest thing is to just not map any initially and just click OK. And same thing with the employees. When you click payees, you click update from company file. That brings in all the payees. And in this case, we've got 93. Now, we need to include in STP everyone who's been paid this year. Now, you may only have four or five, you know exactly who's been paid. Or you might be new to this company and you're not sure who's been paid. So I'm just going to show you a, a quicker way of identifying which ones you need to include. When they're all on the screen, just click Save without adding. At the moment, there's none included in STP. So just click Save. Now we need to go back to the main screen. So I'm just going to save this. File Save As. Give it a name. So Vanilla and Chop Chip Data Set File. Now on this main screen, click Assemble Year to Date Data. Now what this is saying is there are a number of payees where they're not included. However, there's reportable amounts. Well, that's that's good. We know there's payees who are not in included. So what we're going to do is open the next screen. And these are all the payees who MyOB have a record of a payment this year. So the idea is sort this list by payees and make a note of the payees listed here. So we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 12, 22, 53, sorry, 57, 81, and 86. So let's just close that and come back to the data set. And we know we need 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 12, number 22, number 57, number 81, 
and number 86. They are the payees who have been paid this year. So what we've, once we've selected them, we need to click this button here, Include in STP. At the moment, all of these have got a No in this column. So we're going to click Include. And now we've got 10 here, Include in STP. And some of them have got a Yes. What we need to do, though, is we need to run a check. Everyone who's included has to be checked. And this one is saying, Yes, Included, Check, No. So we need to click Check All Payees. This runs some edit checks and picks up any errors. In our case, no errors. Very good. At the moment, we've got 10 included in STP and 10 checked. So that's it for this screen, and we can click Save. And let's go back to the year to date screen and do the same thing for payroll categories. When we click this, we'll get a different message saying not all payroll categories have been mapped. And we know that. It says sort the table and make a note. So let's do that. This time we sort by this table and make a note of all the payroll categories. Here we've got 7, 8, 34, 36, 37, 38, 41, and 44. So let's just close the screen. We can ignore that message. Go back to here, payroll categories. And now what we want to do is map all the ones that are to be mapped the same. For example, employee gross pay. We're going to have base hourly is going to map, be mapped to that same one. So is overtime. 34 was the next one, and that's super guaranteed. That will be mapped separately. Car allowance will be mapped separately. Uh, 38 is base hourly office. That gets to employee gross. And 41 and 44. So once we've selected all the ones that are going to employee gross, we just click edit and it, it lists that this is a multi we're, we're editing multiple payroll categories and they're all going to employee gross and W1 W1, W2 have the same meaning as they do on your business activity statement so W1 is total gross payments W2 is tax so as you can see all of these now have been mapped to gross and so let's now do 34 super guarantee that's going to be mapped to super guarantee amount and NA doesn't get reported on our BAS 36 we've already done 37 is car allowance so when we click on here we've got car allowance because we selected it from the STP fields earlier Oops, sorry and I'm going to stick W1 so I think I've now got all of them so we can close that, click OK, save and close, and come back here. And this time when we open it, we've got no messages. And the whole point of going through this step is to just ensure that you don't get any error messages. You might get some warnings, and you, as long as you understand what those warnings mean, and that you have uh, included or excluded someone deliberately, all good. So at the moment, that just shows you the year-to-date amounts that are going to be reported and that's the STP fields that these categories will be reported against. So we can click Save, and that's it. We've now completed the setup of our data set file, and we've saved that data set file. And I'll cover completing these steps in the next video.